you know, the, I'm happy about this because, like, since it's going on Patreon, mm. it's 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 a lot more intimate. Love it, right? So Love we don't it. have to uh, force ourselves to say viral shit. It, it, yeah, it'll no. just happen. Mm-hmm. Um, welcome everybody to episode. What episode is this? Oh, that's my camera. Uh, episode seven. <laughs> yes. <laughs> episode seven of the table. Wow, my name seven. is Alan. Yeah, we've we've been rolling. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm joined today by our co-host, Miss Portia, looking lovely in that white and that mm-hmm. green, and uh, Mr. Ja. Looking, looking, looking dapper. Dapper cool. Dan. Cat cool. in here, you know? All right, y'all. So this 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 episode is going to be a bit open-ended. I want us mm. to all have kind of latitude to take it where we want to take it because I don't necessarily have a direction. Gotcha. Okay. Um, so to start, I guess, I'm going to start with you, Josh. Is mm-hmm. there anything pressing on your spirit ah, that man. we need to put on the table and talk about? What I would say is... Uh, I want to just kind of tap into the last episode versus the things that I shared. I don't know if you watched a little bit of it. I saw a little bit, yeah. But um, I want y'all to know that the comments are very interesting, Mm -hmm. you know, because just reading the comments, you know, it's not something that will ever affect me because I Mm -hmm. understand, you know, the human condition Mm -hmm. for so, you know, so to speak. So when people are expressing themselves, it just lets me know how traumatized that they are in the comments. So if they're saying something, I'm more so trying to look into what makes them say that, Mm -hmm. you know, versus why did they say it, right? And not being affected by it, because I understand that if someone says, like they were saying, if you see someone like him, Run. run, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know I, mean? I, I did see get that. away. So you know I brought what that mean? up with the uh, case yeah. study I did. Yeah. So I was like, wow, just, just, uh, just the uh, the lack of empathy and compassion for another human being that is sharing their experiences with you, instead of you taking that in and trying to gain some wisdom and some understanding, it's no compassion and empathy. It's more like you know what, just get away from the situation as mm-hmm. fast as possible. You know, and we can't correct human conditions that way. You know, we continue to just press people out of the way versus trying to understand a circumstance to make it better. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to let you guys know that the comments will never affect me Mm -hmm. because I'm big into psychology. You know Mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So I'm always digging into the human psyche, you know what I mean? To understand why people respond and do the things they do. And it just lets me know that y'all, y'all need a lot of work. You know what I mean? And I'm here to help it as best as I can. You, you know talking I mean? about that comment, that child, they done beat me so bad. They done beat me bloody in comments before. Yeah. Um, but honestly, I've gotten to a space where I don't really read them. Mm. Because what you see and what you read is what you internalize a lot of times. Mm. And for someone who is like me, I'm intentional about focusing on being better. Mm-hmm. And because of where I started at, even when we started this and mm-hmm. beyond, to now, my focus is on becoming better and People can push you back into where you don't want to be mm-hmm. if you read those comments enough. Mm. They can make you feel like, oh, well, maybe, mm. maybe I should want to show them why you think this and I can be that. But mm. what I've had to internalize for myself is I'm not everybody's cup of tea. Mm, Some sure. folks like Hennessy. Mm-hmm. Some folks like coffee. Mm-hmm. I like to consider myself just me. And mm. when I say something, it comes from my trial, place. my error, my, I'm genuine with it, and mm-hmm. it's just what, from my experience. Mm-hmm. So however you take it, it's how you take it. Mm-hmm. Some of y'all take it too far, mm-hmm. but it's all right. Like you said, that's your hurt place. Yeah, sure. Mm-hmm. And sure. I can't speak for you there. Yeah. yeah. The thing that stood out to me, and, and I said that, uh, I talked about this during uh, my, uh, the, the last thing that I posted, a conversation with mm-hmm. Saray. Um, I think it's unfortunate that there is that inequity mm-hmm. because if if you were a woman, right, with a similar story, mm-hmm. but if you flip your mom with your dad, right, yeah. and, and you were a woman talking about, yeah, my dad was on drugs and my mm-hmm. dad, um, he wasn't there for me or whatever the case may be, there is no, there might be like a fella stay away from women like this, but mm-hmm. the expectation is our job as men is to heal women sure. like that. Our job as black men in particular is to come in and, and be the example. Mm-hmm. Show her that she don't have to think that men are a certain thing, mm-hmm. right? Show her that she deserves better than what she was born into. Mm-hmm. But it seems like that consideration is not both ways. Like yeah. men are just supposed to be fixed and healed off top. 
-hmm. but while we're fixed and healed, we should expect a certain brokenness from you that we now accommodate. Mm. Right. And now we, we should have patience for it. We need to be a therapist and, 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 and your mm. doctor and your uh, partner and your gym buddy and all that good mm -hmm. stuff. And it's like, I don't think that's going to work long term. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree. Uh, like you said, uh, if the story was flipped, it would have been so much empathy and compassion yeah. towards that. Because unfortunately, women lead the market. Right. So. When a man is speaking, you know, 90% of the time, there's probably going to be more women dialed in than men. Mm -hmm. But men will actually come in and, you know, they'll fight for the brothers. You know, like it was a lot of brothers on there. They was fighting. Yeah. They, was they like, had Yo. similar stories. They too. had similar stories, you know. And I just felt like the impact was more astronomical on my end just to be able to share that, to see other men mm. not be afraid to be like, oh, hold on. If I he got, can talk, I, I can, can talk. talk. You know what I mean? Because we don't have a safe space for the most part, you know, without being judged or feeling like we're broken and we're too broke and we can't be repaired, you know, because that's just the, the mindset now of a woman that if a man is broken, I'm not here to fix you, mm. right? Mm -hmm. And why should, we be, be, why should we be there to fix you? But we're expected to do that on top of our traumas, right? So if a man comes to the table and he's traumatized with his life experiences, we're actually looked at as the expectations of us coming and dealing with our traumas and making you better, right? So if you had daddy issues or circumstances, now we got to come in and say, you know what, I'm going to fix me and you, mm. right? Which, if you look at it statistically, it shows you that men die of stress, right? Mm -hmm. High rates of stress before the woman. Why is that? Because men are internalizing their trauma. It's no outlet. Yeah, it's no outlet. So... so let me ask you a question. Like, what, what is the... Because I, I, I got to be fair. Like, some women, when they say stuff like that, like, stay away from men like this, mm -hmm. they have a point, right? Mm -hmm. Some men, when they say stay away from women like this, like, mm -hmm. I did a whole series called Yellow Flags, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's a point to that. Mm -hmm. So what's the line between I should have or I should make some space to accommodate just the messiness that is another person versus, okay... This person is insalvageable, and they'll drag me down with them. Mm -hmm. When those yellow flags turn to red, like, mm -hmm. we are people that are capable of understanding and deciphering when something is no good for us any longer. Mm -hmm. But we choose to ignore it. Mm -hmm. Women like to notice and see those things that are wrong, but in our mind, we create a version of it that's going to be what we want and we work towards that version instead of dealing in reality mm -hmm. of what we actually have. Men, like y'all say, internalize so much, so at a certain point to me, men become pretenders. Mm -hmm. You pretend to be whatever version of you that I wanna see. Mm -hmm. So when a woman starts looking at the vision more than the reality, and when the man starts looking at, when a man has to pretend rather than be who you actually are, mm -hmm. that's when you know you got a distance. Mm -hmm. It's a and that's, just where, that's where I see yeah. because you, you, you know when you're not being who you are. Mm -hmm. You're sure. uncomfortable. You can't sit in it. Mm -hmm. And while you may put on a good face mm -hmm. when, when you're with that person, like you said in one of your late, latest videos, you sit in the car for an hour after work mm -hmm. because you have to put on the mask. Mm -hmm. You have to put on the shield, put on the suit, and be this person that she envisions me to be. The character. That care, you become this character. Mm -hmm. So for women, when you're when you're holding out hope for the vision more than you are dealing in reality, mm -hmm. for the man, when you got to put the suit on, yeah. you're coming home. Mm. Mm. Interesting. It is interesting, and I think um, that that's one of the issues I have with the like the dating world and the the social dynamics right now. It's all about it what can you do for me, mm -hmm. right? For sure. Um, what 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 do you think? And this is open to both mm -hmm. of y'all. Like, if we continue business as usual, like, where, where is this going with the next generation? A bunch of oblongly shaped women. Not oblong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oblongly shaped women. God damn. Because, baby, I have seen so many women like, this past weekend. No lie, with thighs that don't match the booty. Mm. And mm. it does it does not look good. Sorry, that was that was a tire. But I'm just mm -hmm. saying that's what we're gonna oblongly shaped women mm -hmm. who are focused on 
an aesthetic for an Instagram picture mm -hmm. or a Snapchat story and broke men in a whole lot of debt mm. mm -hmm. because you're trying to put play on this face yeah. in the show to play the part mm -hmm. with nobody really being happy. Mm -hmm. Like I liken it to looking at social media now, like literally I can scroll and whether it's a reel or a picture you're posting, I can see the unhappiness in you. Oh, for sure. And I'm like, I'm not saying that I'm some kind of great spirit or whatever, but mm -hmm. you can see when it's not genuine. Mm -hmm. The smile ain't reaching your eyes. Mm -hmm. It's you can tell that laugh was curated for that moment, and then for when sure. you stop the camera, it was done. Mm -hmm. Like we're gonna we're gonna be in a world of hell, basically AI. Mm. We are walking around automations. We're Sims at that point. We live in a world I like to call expectation societies because we have such high expectations for trauma, traumatized individuals. That means that unless we're willing to dive deep into the, the issues, the foundation, I always like to tell people there's a foundation to everything right, even the structure of a home. Mm -hmm. So a person is the same way. So if you look at a person as, what is the foundation to that person and why have they become who they are today? Like even a person that's highly driven to be successful, they probably was poor. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So if you look at someone who is highly in tune with uh, spirituality, they probably was broken. Right, so you gotta look at all of these particular aspects of our life to see what put us on a certain journey. Mm -hmm. Like for me, I come from a broken environment, so my purpose in life is to heal, right? To fix things that's broken. So we gotta always look at the circumstance of the person that we're in a relationship with or the people in general in the world to be like, okay, how do we move the planet forward? We gotta start having real conversations. Mm -hmm. Because right now we're just having filler conversations entertaining conversations, you know, that kind of keep us away from really digging into the reality of what we should be talking about. Mm -hmm. Because most of the time, people don't want to talk about those things. They want to talk about things that's going to level them up, mm -hmm. right? But they're, to they're torn down internally, mm -hmm. you know? So you can't level up if you're torn down internally. You can put a mask on for a while. You know, like, you ever seen an interview with Jim Carrey? Mm -hmm. How he became a character for so long that he finally took the mask off because he lived in this character Mm. of acting so long that finally his awareness became so aware that he can no longer act anymore because he knew that I had to put a character on every time mm -hmm. I stepped into a role. And what happens in society when we really pay attention to it, even when we're looking at these women on Instagram, everybody's in a character, mm. right? They're not in the reality of their life, they're in the character. And what's happening is you have characters marrying characters, right? And that's why people, they get on a stage. It's like a stage in their life. When they m meet each other, it's a stage. I got to present myself a certain way. That's why men are highly driven to be successful because they're trying to pivot and put themselves in a position to where they can be attractive financially and successfully. But at the end of the day, you still have that little boy who was traumatized, right? Who learned to put on a mask, this illusion, to be able to be presentable to the world where he's still broken or she's still broken. That's why you start to see the collapse, the collapse and the breakdown when you see people who are highly successful, they have the same issues as you and me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, the money don't make you, right, mm -hmm. happier, right? It just allows you to be able to mask it a little longer. So we gotta start really digging into the psychosis of the human being mm -hmm. in order to change the dynamics and why we're thinking this way and why we're suffering. Because if we don't, we're gonna continue to produce the realities that we're producing. That's why we gotta have the real conversation. But those things generally don't be as attractive. I, I shit you not. I was talking with my homegirl the other day and I was, they asked me why I like reality TV because I still watch stuff like Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, mm. all those stuff, I, I love it. Mm. Why do you watch that trash? It's garbage. Because it's entertainment, it's funny. I'm mm. not gonna apologize for that I laugh at it. Mm -hmm. And also because these people have more money than me but they're not happy like me, they're, they are unhappy. So it makes me feel okay about being on my couch with all of my things that I have. Mm -hmm. It's not a whole lot, but I'm happy with it. Mm. My car is 13 years old, mm. but I'm happy about it, I'm happy. My life is so regular, I'm happy, but them people on there, like they put, they have the glitz, the glamour, the fame, and they are miserable. Mm. 
So it makes me feel good about myself because if you look at stuff, like you look at social media, you look at TikTok, everyone is so successful, right? Everyone is so happy. There's mm-hmm. Everything is so glamorous. It's ne- like there's rarely anything you're going to see that's showing where, oh, I just feel bad. I'm down. Being honest and truthful. It's always a beautiful picture. Like you said, the families that are created, they have this hard love story we started, mm-hmm. and then we grew to this. They don't talk about those three years here they weren't together and screwing around with somebody else, or that time that you we were engaged, but I was still, mm-hmm. you know, screwing with your homeboy that was now in the wedding, those kind of things. You don't talk about that. Mm-hmm. You talk about the beautiful parts of it. And that's why, I mean, that's why people are confused, because the world is, is designed to pull you into social medias. Mm-hmm quick, instant gratifications where you believe you can have these things and do these things. And it's always a beautiful picture. So people are reaching for those pictures. They're trying to paint those pictures of their own life. But, baby, you, you got the wrong canvas. Did like, you, you see can't a, do it. Did you guys see the, um, the Netflix series uh, called The Social Dilemma? Mm-hmm. Mm-mm. You seen that? Yeah, I seen it. Yeah, I said it's dope, and it's deep because it shows you the tranquility of social media. Like, it shows that it was created to exactly. be exactly what it is. But exactly so it's, what it's, it is. It's work. And uh, actually, on the way here, I was having a conversation about social media. Um, part of the reason I deleted my account, like people sometimes comment, like, Who, who's this brother's account? We mm-hmm. need to talk is my account. That's the only account mm-hmm. I have. It's, because, it's partly because of that documentary. Mm-hmm. But um, the whole point, even like with YouTube and everything else, the whole point of social media is to keep people on the platform. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's what TikTok rewards, that's what YouTube rewards, that's what Instagram rewards. Okay. It's to siphon your time. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, something you brought up, Borsa, we are addicted to the trash. Mm-hmm. Oh, I, and I, like I said, I'm not ashamed. It's my guilty pleasure. Right. I, but it, it's, I, it's not, my not, guilty not, pleasure. Not, not just the trash of like reality shows, oh, yeah. but also the trash of comparison. Oh, you know, sure. Comparison yeah. is a thief of joy. Mm-hmm. So we're just as addicted to feeling better about ourselves because these rich folks are miserable Mm -hmm. as we are feeling bad about ourselves because so-so-and-so found a man and their Mm -hmm. love story looks so good. Like Mm -hmm. we're, we're attracted to, and we are enamored by Mm -hmm. feeling terrible too. And that's, what's Mm -hmm. interesting. And that's what I think we don't realize. Like in as much as we're looking for stuff to make us feel bad about ourselves, Mm -hmm. we're also a bit good about ourselves. I'm sorry. We're also looking for stuff to make us feel bad and we're addicted to it. I'm For sure, like you said, though. comparison is a thief of joy. That shit's right. really, really... 100%. It is. If you really just pay attention to those those words, mm-hmm. there's just so much power in that. Mm-hmm. Like, you can really move yourself out of a position of feeling a certain way by just knowing that. Mm-hmm. Comparison. Like, when I go watch my little son play basketball because he just started playing basketball, and I see all these parents, they get emotionally upset that their kids are not making baskets. Literally, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Because they've been raised to have this competition spirit, Mm -hmm. right? And competitiveness is a prison, right? Whether or not we want to look at it or not, we can say, hey, you know what? I'm going to be competitive because I can be better than you, right? Mm -hmm. There's a point where you can be competitive, but if you don't have a sense of awareness to your competitiveness, then what happens is your ego steps up a notch and then you have a a less of empathy and compassion for other people. Mm -hmm. So you got to be, it's a very fine tuned wave of frequency that you got to be on to be able to say, okay, well, I can exist in this world and where it's operating. But if I continue to allow myself not to check myself at the front door, I'll fall right into the trap like anybody else. And that's what happens on social media. It's a competitive, it's it's a field of frequency that says, Mm -hmm. my life has to be as better as yours for you to accept me, Mm -hmm. right? And it's like, okay, well, I gotta go out here and I gotta I gotta go through all of this, all of this shit, right? Just to be able to sit in front of a person and say, hey, you know what? Because you have all those accolades, I can respect you. Mm-hmm. Right? And when I see that, I'm like, damn, the world is so lost because a person can literally open up their mouth and have great wisdom and great understanding mm-hmm. that can move mountains, but a person will never listen to it if you don't have everything that says that you earned that. Right. How are you supposed to date in this kind of in that in that environment? Well, before we get there, let, let's, yeah, let's, 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 let's talk. About, let's talk about this because you said, and I think it's relevant to um, the point of the table generally. Mm-hmm. Mm. You said I'm still gonna watch it. Oh mm. yeah, because <laughs> let, let's talk about okay. it. Okay. Why? Why? why because and the reason I want to bring it up is because that's not foreign. Like you mm-hmm. are 99.999% mm-hmm. of women. Um, why? Because it is my mindless background. It's my escape. 
Hmm. So I work a lot, mm -hmm. multiple jobs, where in those jobs I have to take on different roles in mm. each of them, but they're all pretty serious. Mm. Like, so for my nine to five, I have to be, I'm an educator, I'm a presenter for parents and children. So that's pretty serious. That, and that is me dealing with the realities and struggles of parenting. Mm. You know how that can be. And mm -hmm. telling people about their children, how to manage misbehavior is not always a gentle and easy conversation. Mm -hmm. I'm a makeup artist mm -hmm. where I get to have fun. That's my business, I get to have fun with that. But mm -hmm. at the same time, it's my brand. Mm. I have to protect it. So I have to make sure that I'm putting forth the image that I want to attract from other people and people that my clientele. And then I also, I'm a creative director for a photography company. In that, where I can still have fun because it's like a family environment, I work weddings often mm. where you gotta get things done. Events where things have to be done. I have to make sure that the staff is doing what they're supposed to be doing. So when all those things have to be serious, mm. home is my sanctuary. It's where I get to take off the hats of Mm -hmm. the makeup artist, the director, the educator, and just chill and not, and not think. And I have anxiety. Mm. If I don't shut it off some way, it won't shut off. Mm. So putting on mindless babble helps me shut it off. It's either that or work more because I don't know the, I don't know the mix of... So you have creative anxiety. Yes. Because if, if I'm just sitting there, if it's not something that me and her, my girlfriend are watching something that like a new show or a program mm -hmm. we want to watch... I gotta have something on to make me be quiet. Because if not, I'll sit there, I'll get my phone and start editing a video for content. I'll start writing out a plan for this class I'm gonna put on or what mm. I need to buy from. It's like, it never stops for me. So that gives so you that a break. It helps me, it gives, mindless TV helps me shut mm. off, zone into that for a little bit. And then when I get tired of it or when the, show, the show's over, I'm like, okay, my mind has calmed down. Mm. And now, now I'm not in a space where I have to think because I've watched that and I'm probably laughing at the, something stupid that happened on there. Like, mm -hmm. they really sitting here going through this, which is minute, and I was stressed about this today. Let it go. And then I can calm my nerves and ease into my night. Now, when you're watching that, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't see you as a person that takes on those type of characteristics. So mm -hmm. when you're watching it, are, what are you learning from that in the process? So people tell, <laughs> again, I'm ghetto as fuck. <laughs> I don't mean to be, but it's mm -hmm. just a product of how I grew up. So mm -hmm. who I am at the, at the most rested part of me, mm -hmm. I would never be those people. Mm -hmm. But in anything and anyone, mm -hmm. you can see parts of yourself if mm -hmm. you look hard enough. Mm -hmm. Or even if not, I'm not seeing a part of myself, I'm seeing, oh, that's a cute outfit I could put together. Oh, her her nose contour is amazing. I'm not lying. This is the things I kind of look at if I if it, the conversation is being dumb or I know the scripted conversation is just mm -hmm. I don't need to listen. I'm thinking about something else in it, mm -hmm. and because again they they are the trendsetters. There's always uniqueness in it. Mm -hmm. And there's a restaurant I want to try in Atlanta. Those kind of things are mm -hmm. also popping up as well. Okay. So it can be a number of things. Like I said, but if they're having an argument and I'm tuned into that argument or when they're about to fight, mm -hmm. I'm gonna be. Uh, whatever. I'll be honest, I do be like, that was stupid as hell. I just wasted about 10 minutes on something that I, like, y'all hyped this up with the commercial to be real good, and it was nothing. Mm. I'm often disappointed by it, but I addiction. have the addiction to it. I would say mm. I'm about to scratch my, I have my, that scratch my knees addiction to it because it's my escape. Mm. Reality ain't always reality for me or something. I just need to get out of my reality and go into somebody else's, I guess. Mm. My reflex was to say or was to ask, like, what are you, um, what's the consequence, right, mm -hmm. of, of that? Because, you know, I did a series called Yellow Flags. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And one episode was about diet. And one of the things that I brought up was, like, what kind of entertainment does she consume? Because mm -hmm. that's also part of her diet. Anything that's entering you is part of your diet. For sure. And, you know, like, if you eat like shit, you're going to shit like shit, mm -hmm. right? And And... What you eat through your ears is going to come out of your mouth, mm -hmm. you know. So, but the way that you broke it down has me thinking about um, this concept of a Faustian bargain, a deal with the devil, right? Mm -hmm. Like, uh, the way life really works is for any good thing you want, there's a cost, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and for some bad things, there's a benefit, right? So I'm, I'm still working through if... The majority of our women, for instance, are consuming this trash content that they know is trash. And it's subconsciously even affecting some of their interactions with us. Mm -hmm. 
um, some of their interactions with their friends, their, their children, their coworkers, whatever the case may be. However, it's also a release, like the anxiety rate is high. Like mm -hmm. there's so, so many women with anxiety. Mm -hmm. Even like panic attacks, panic mm -hmm. uh, disorder, and the whole nine. What is it, do the ends justify the means? Basically, and I, I don't, I don't know. What, what, what do you think? If I watched nothing but that, mm -hmm. maybe I would be like, oh yeah, no, it, they don't. But to me, they do because I'm rooted in in me. Like, for, I'm not gonna go out and deal with a dude that has four baby mamas and about to go to jail in two weeks. Like, I'm not going to go out here and look for these things. Mm. And while a lot of it can be trashy, there's, again, like I said, there's something to be learned in it. I've learned makeup techniques. I've learned posing. I've learned different things from, hell, uh, from the girl Sierra. I, I saw her on Love & Hip Hop and learned how to start cooking certain things from her. Mm -hmm. So there's, to me, there's something to be gained from it. Now, I'm 34 and I've been through a lot of experiences. So the way I view it and I release from it is not the same way somebody else is going to. And I think that that's what I'm concerned about. So it's your motivation for watching that depends on what you're gonna gain from it or whether it's a... But the, the, the way I'm thinking about it, like um, when, when reality, and you brought it up and I think that's, mm -hmm. that's the deep part about this. When, when your reality isn't necessarily what you want it to be or ideal, mm -hmm. right? Uh, we will escape. Mm -hmm. Some people, they escape to their basement. Um, but the trend I've seen is, like, boys tend to escape to video games, the virtual mm -hmm. world, right? And they become incels in a whole nine. Girls tend to escape to television, movies, and novels. Mm -hmm. right? Oh, I read, too. Um, um, oh, my gosh, I love my iPad. <laughs> I, I, I do. I read on my iPad. Yeah. And, and we're seeing this next generation of girls specifically because I don't think this stuff is conscious. I think it's subconscious. Mm -hmm. They're starting to take on the Bambi. Uh, the personas uh, the, of the, the women persona, they see. The, mm -hmm. the, the, the uh, Carly Red and all that stuff mm -hmm. subconsciously. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I think people in general, but women in particular, overestimate their ability to like separate and compartmentalize stuff. Mm -hmm. And I think whether they realize it or not, if you consume enough of it, it just like your diet, right? Mm -hmm. It becomes you. So I, yeah, I don't have the clear answer, but like, what is the line between, I? Right, damn, I just noticed that I was snappier than I would have been naturally, mm -hmm. and maybe it's because of all this love of hip hop I've been consuming, versus, oh, that's just me being snappy. So to that, I'll say, like, I can have that same occupational hazard thing happen from any of my other jobs. Mm -hmm. Like when I'm in creative director mode, I am a drill sergeant sometimes. Mm -hmm. And if I forget to turn it off by the time I get home, I might start telling and delving out orders when I'm, I'm meant to ask or I'm meant to say it more gently. Mm -hmm. So I mean, for again, this is for me. And also, let me say this. I grew up in a time where reality TV was reality at first. So, like, when I, when I first started watching it, the stuff was really happening. While it was scripted, it wasn't as scripted as it is now. Now it's literally created. Drink in her face yes, and it's, it's created for argument. you. You're going to get this cute, and, be, and this, these are the three things you can talk about and stay on subject to them. And I want you to say this when she says this so that what it, now make it naturally happen. It wasn't that much then. So, I don't know, for me, I, I don't have that same mindset. So maybe we should ask, maybe I'll do the homework and ask somebody in the age bracket that wants to look like a Bambi or a big lip Carly Red, because everyone on there has plastic surgery too. Mm -hmm. So this is what you're saying. Yep. You see me putting it together as you're saying We're it. We're normalizing But see, those kind, I don't want mm -hmm. any of those things. But, see, but, but, but I'm that, not that person. But that's the thing, kind of like I brought up, I think it was episode two. Mm -hmm. um, it used to be that art imitated reality, and I think that's mm -hmm. what you were talking about yeah. with the old reality shows, but mm -hmm. now reality is imitating art, mm -hmm. right? And we don't even know the difference anymore. Mm -hmm. We don't know what's real and what's scripted. Mm -hmm. and, and I think it's only going in one direction, and unfortunately, going back to the whole social media thing, it is our attention, mm -hmm. it is our um, uh, 
patronage, right, with mm -hmm. information and the whole nine that keeps these things alive for the next generation. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. if we're not willing to divorce ourselves of whether it's social media, whether it's reality TV, whether it's bad food, it tells the algorithm, whether mm -hmm. literally or figuratively, what to feed that you. this is what people want. Mm -hmm. And it's going to feed it to you. It's going to feed it to your children. It's going to feed it to your nephews and your nieces. Mm -hmm. And at some point, like, we have to decide which negative is more negative. What's happening is they're breaking down the human consciousness. Well, right? That so, Mandela effect stuff is doing that, too. So mm -hmm. when, when, you you, know? when you pay attention to it, right, like you said, your import becomes your export. Right. Mm -hmm. Biblically, if you go back and look at a scripture, it says bad associations spoil useful habits. So what that means is if you're around things that you don't want to be like or become, then you become them. Rego regardless to how conscious that you are is just how things start to affect your life. So what I always talk to my children about is uh, sometimes I'm very graphic. Mm -hmm but I'm a realist and I like to make a point. I don't like to dance around it. Mm. So one of my favorite analogies is, if I put a plate of shit in front of you, would you eat it? Right? Oh. No, I wouldn't do that. Why would you ask me to do that? It's the same thing that you're consuming. Mm. So at some point, when are you going to take the plate of shit away, mm. right? Without consuming it. So for me, that's why I was talking earlier when I said there's a lot of stuff I don't even know what's going on mm -hmm. because I just don't consume it. Because I know how it can impact, even though I may have a certain level of consciousness and awareness, how it can impact my mood, mm -hmm. right? My disposition, right? So my emotional state. So I try every day of my life to only consume things that I'm interested in that is going to allow me to move the conversation forward mm -hmm. with the people I'm sitting around having conversations with. So in my house, there's a great division. And that division is social media and me, right? <laughs> so I people people always say, you're isolated. You're a very isolated person. I don't even entertain certain conversations when family come around because I'm that serious about what I'm consuming, right? Now I may sit around some time, laugh and joke about certain things, but when the interest is no longer of, of a state of elevation, I'm removing myself from that. Because one thing my lady says to me all the time is I'm an extremist. And I'm not an extremist. What I am is someone who takes shit serious. And I know that if we don't take it serious, then the conversation that we're having right now that's great is eventually going to go out the door. It's like in one ear and out the other. Right. So when are we going to get to a point where when we're hearing these great dialogues and these great conversations that's life transforming or, tran you know, able to transform our character? When are we going to take those serious enough to be like, you know what? This is the playground I want to play in versus the other one. Right. Because that's how I look at life. Life is a playground. What are you playing with every day? Right. You're playing with all type of different things if you choose to. Or you choose to be over here with this group of people who are trying to move the planet forward in a different direction. I think, I think what's particularly insidious about this conversation we're having in, in these things, because I don't think it's just women. I think men do it too. For sure. Right? I think oh we, yeah, that's that's be clear. Definitely know some men that right. watch reality. No, no, TV. not not just reality TV. Oh. Like the different things that we consume to oh, compensate yeah. for our lives, not necessarily looking like what they need to look like, mm -hmm. and. You know, the, the thing the thing that's heartbreaking is like whether it's food, whether it's drugs, whether it's social media, whether it's reality television, if you consume something long enough, you get addicted to it and you get reliant on it. Right. Like I talk about all the time. For sure. The conversation we haven't been willing to have about the hood is like people talk about smoking weed. Mm -hmm. I would say in my experience, mm -hmm. ninety 5% of people who smoke weed, it's just their antidepressant. For sure. 
Mm-hmm. It's their self, they're, they're self-medicating. For sure. But again, we've so glamorized it in our culture mm-hmm. that no, it's e- the same with rappers drinking lean and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Instead mm-hmm. of telling the truth about, oh no, he is depressed. He's mm-hmm. suffering from anxiety. He's got PTSD. Mm-hmm. It's just a thing to do. Or he's got those same issues that I had. Mother grew up on you know, mm-hmm. drugs, never had a household, never had a father figure there, mm-hmm. right? Didn't have the love and nurturing that he needed. Yeah. So therefore, he piggybacked off of that trauma and said, listen, I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a smoke myself to death mm-hmm. every day. You know, I'm going to smoke 10, 15 blunts a day. I'm going to drink lean, right? Mm-hmm. I'm going to become this, this rapper that I know is only influential to get me enough money to get myself out of the circumstance that I was in. Mm-hmm. And that's the addiction. It's like, okay, you know what? This, I'm not really this person, but I'm putting on this character like we were talking about a little while ago. I'm going to become this character and I'm going to be so good at this Mm -hmm. that it's going to make me enough money that I can get me and my mother out the hood. Mm -hmm. But not realizing the detriment that I'm still causing to the same place I'm trying to leave. And that to me is mind boggling because if you come from a circumstance or situation like that, you would hope you want to make that better. Mm -hmm. Not being influenced to where it's still you, (laughs) you know, you, you making it worse. So I I think that the, the interesting thing, uh, and I think how it applies to like this gender divide is some men's reality television is crazy ass women. Mm. <laughs> some women's reality television is crazy ass men. Mm-hmm. Right? It's it's their mindless escape. Because mm. you thrive in chaos. Mm. That's really what it boils down you to. It's, it's, chaos, your, it's your mindless it's escape. Yeah. It makes you forget the reality that you have to deal with. It's mm-hmm. your video game. Mm-hmm. Navigating her emotions is your video game. Mm-hmm. Navigating whether or not he's going to come home tonight mm-hmm. from the hood shit he's doing mm-hmm. is your reality television. So you can have somebody mm-hmm. to tell about it. You can have something to fuss about. You can have something to get, get angry about, and then y'all can make up and your get all over again. Your life is yeah. interesting. Exactly. Yeah. And that's the insidious part I don't think we talk about. Mm-hmm. So, like... I think reality television and video games are like level one, mm. but the reality is, pun intended, mm. we extrapolate that into different aspects of our life. The people that we involve ourselves with, mm. the situations that we put ourselves in, mm. the places that we take ourselves to, mm. because subconsciously we're chasing that escape. Mm-hmm. That's right. Is that it's the addiction? Mm-hmm. So much so How are you gonna get that, that we have to manifest that reality. Yeah every day of our life, and then we get upset that we're manifesting that reality. Mm. See, that's the psycho synopsis of the shit when you sit around and say, you know what, I don't like the reality in which I'm creating, but I keep producing it every day of my life. Because you like it. Mm-hmm. You like it, right? You like so it. It's, like a, it's like a woman being in a relationship with a man, and she know that uh, he's, he's, he's this type of way, and that she's that type of way, and then they come together, and they're their type of way, mm-hmm. and they're constantly trying to fight, right? to build the best characters in one another. Because the conscious mind knows how this person should perform in a relationship. That's the beautiful thing about it. The conscious mind is always there. It's just that the subconscious mind says, you know what, I have superseded that your level and you'll never get to it unless you put me first. Mm-hmm. And that's what happens in relationships. That's why you have, the, you have these, these relationships where everyone is a therapist in a relationship. They know how to fix the issues, but they never fix them. It's like, hey, you know what? You know you can be doing this better, right? A woman to tell you you come in the house, you know, when you first come in the house, the first thing I want you to do is acknowledge me, right? So mm-hmm. she's putting it on the table what she want, and then a man comes in the house, and he says, well, this is what I want you to do. And then you have that expression of both people saying this is what they need from each other, but it never happens because they're so divided because of social media, right? Mm-hmm. Looking at these infixations or this dopamine that they're getting off of yeah. it. I, w- I was I was I was in New York. Um, it had to be like four or five, six months ago, mm. and I made the stupid choice to drive, like in, in the c- in the city. Yeah, mm. I don't know why I did that. It was okay. a terrible <laughs> idea. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was a jungle in mm-hmm. the, all you the kn- senses. You knew better. I knew better because I had lived in New York. Why. We know better about, but, but, did, we just but you don't do better. Mm-hmm. Now, what what was interesting for me is like, you know. Being stuck in traffic, I was just like people watching, mm-hmm. watching people. Mm-hmm. And it was crazy to me that whole time I was like, I don't know how people do this. I looked outside, like people fussing at each other, going about their business. I was like, this is their normal. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So if they were to move to South Carolina, for instance, yeah. they might have a hard time falling asleep mm-hmm. because loud. the quiet is too loud. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Exactly. The quiet is too loud. And, and here, I, and I, up here though. 
And I think that's exactly what happens with our men. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what happens with our women. When chaos becomes your normal, it mm -hmm. becomes your stable, you don't know peace. Mm -hmm. And you don't even know how to deal with peace. So whether, and, and that, that's what's um, kind of sad about hearing men complain about women or women complain about men. Because when you search their hearts, they don't want a good man. Mm. They don't want a good woman. They want to want it, mm. but they don't actually want it. They don't want a good life. They want to want a good life, mm. but they don't actually want it because their normal is chaos. For sure. They don't know how to sleep unless there are sirens outside. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Literally and figuratively. Literally, yeah. And I think that's a part of the conversation we don't talk about often. Mm -hmm. For sure. That's, that is the direction we need to be going in because that allows us to, to transcend what we're dealing with continuously because you got to realize the world the, the operation of the world is it's, it's on a time scale right and we time scale things by 8 10 12 24 hours right and if a person is on their job eight hours they're occupied with the work sport force right the workspace so i got to get this job done in a certain amount of time eight to ten hours whatever so their mind is occupied with whatever position they're playing at that that, that job when they come home right how much time are they actually spending developing their relationship with their children or their loved ones, right? So it's like if I come home out of an eight to 10 hour shift, then I come into a crib that is not pleasing for me to really be in, to take it back to the point where the dude sitting in the car don't really want to be there anyway, he might spend an hour in the car, hour and a half in the car, social medializing himself, right? Then he gets in the house, he probably done watched a whole bunch of video content about how women <laughs> ain't really <laughs> need, to, need to be, right? So he going in the house, and his woman probably in the house looking at the same thing. Men ain't doing what they need to do. So when they both meet, it's war. It's war. And it's, it's, it's never a level of understanding because everybody on social media is therapists telling you what you need to do to correct your relationship and fix your situation, right? And that's what people are hearing. The women are saying what men need to do, and men are saying what women need to do. And next thing you know, we're consuming so much of that that the person that we go in the house with, they ain't doing with the beautiful woman that's sitting behind the microphone saying that, you know, she just got that aura and I wish my woman was like that. Mm -hmm. And the man that's speaking all these gems and these Jew, I wish my man was like that. And then you start losing the value of the person that's there with you that you can fix the issue, but you can't because your mind is so tantalized that there is someone specifically for you. And I always tell people, there's no one specifically for you. Right? It's how you decide you want to attack the issues together. Right? Mm -hmm. Because if you say, I can leave you and find somebody else better, that's a fairy tale. Because everybody in the world is fucked up in a lot of ways. Right? So when you go to leave the relationship and go to another one, you got to either look at somebody who took time to elevate themselves out of those spaces that they was in to become a better person. And you might not be able to get them because they might be taken by someone else who had elevated themselves. And they probably met each other, and now that relationship is outstanding. But now you got a whole dating pool of people in this world who are so traumatized and so fucked up that when they go date again, they put on their best outfit mm -hmm. just to meet each other all over again. And the circumstance and situation happens all over again six months down the line. Because reality is hard. And people don't, people take it for granted that. In order for you to truly find that peace, grow and be happy, you have to go through uncomfortable states. For sure. To find your happy place, you've got to be unhappy and figure out what's wrong with you as to why you're not in this happy state. And people don't want to do that. It's hard to, like, you can, you can always point out what someone's doing that you don't like, what's pissing you off what you don't like about everything else around you. Mm. But when you gotta turn that mirror on to you, it's difficult. Because while you can get surface and say, okay, well, I know I could've did this and that. Mm -hmm. Beyond that surface, you gotta dig. And sometimes you don't know. Me personally, I feel like I've had over the past like six months, I've had to dig and figure out like, what lies have I told myself that made me comfortable in this state because I got comfortable for a minute, stagnant in my business, mm -hmm. in work, in life, in my relationship. I'm like, I'm stagnant. I feel like I'm not moving. I'm, I'm stuck. Mm -hmm. 
but I'm I'm putting on a brave face. I'm still fighting. I'm going I'm going out here. I'm doing it. But am I really putting on a brave? Am I, am I really fighting because I'm not dealing with what's going on with me? Mm. When people start looking at themselves, and I'm not saying don't look at yourself with the glitz, the glamour, the bust down middle part, all this. Look at yourself for who you are, mm -hmm. and what parts of you. When you see something you don't like somebody else, do you possess that? If you do, work on that first for you, and then. You embody what you want to see from other people. But people aren't, we're not doing that because, again, that's not glamorized. Hmm. That's not what's publicized. That's not what we're socialized to do. We're hmm. socialized to be in a factory. Like, we're one size fits all. This is the mold. Stick to it. You'll be great because you have people mm -hmm. everywhere showing you if you do this. And people latch on to Sure. What again? That vision, that what they want to be, rather than the reality of where they are. So, if for our content, for example, we first started when I was more closed-minded, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. people ate me up. Mm. Men especially, women. High five, girls. Sing your yes. That's right, sis. Mm -hmm. When I started shifting, mm -hmm. oh, she's a pick me. Mm. Men, oh my beautiful black queen, put babies in her, mm. like. When I'm saying what you, you got want DM me to say, <laughs> <laughs> I told you mm. the block button been heavy because what? Mm. But that's but that part's okay. Them same men that were that bash you now you saying this in a DM, and that's okay for you to do. Mm. So mm -hmm. it's it's like I said it's it's a catch twenty two I guess because it's like we're not really trying to be better. We look for what we can rest in comfortably and what mm -hmm. fits our ideals and what fits that suit or in that, you know, that character we put on mm -hmm. and we, we flock towards it. Mm. What, do we, what do you think we're afraid of, right? Because I, I think about, um, was it uh, that, that movie Whoopi Goldberg was in, uh, our greatest, no, not that, it was uh, Morgan Freeman. Our greatest fear is not that we are inadequate, it's that we're powerful beyond measure, something like that. I forgot um, what. Coach Carter Coach with Samuel L. Jackson. Samuel L. Jackson. I'm tripping. What's your mm. deepest fear? Yeah. <laughs> so, like, uh -huh. do you think, and I think especially as black folks, like, when, when you go back in our history, um, we have a legacy of turning trash into delicacies, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. From our food, our culture, the whole nine. And the same is true for African culture in a lot of ways as well. Um, do do y'all think we're afraid of better? Like Absolutely. women are afraid of a good man. Men are afraid of a woman who doesn't need fixing or who doesn't who's a good woman. Like, do you think we're afraid of what we claim we want? We're afraid of it because in order for us to attain it, we have to be better too. Mm. That that quote is one that I live by. It's not that we're inadequate. It's that we're powerful beyond measure. Because when you start, when you recognize your power. Mm -hmm. People think that it's going to be, oh, fulfilling, wonderful, great. That She's is some terrifying. of the scariest shit mm. because you realize, wait a minute, I can be, I can do, but it requires more of me than, I, I won't just get it. Right. It don't just come to me. I have to go mm. chase it. Right. And in order to do that, you got to let some shit go. People, places, and things. Mm. You got to let it go. Mm. And yeah. that is terrifying because I'm comfortable here. You know, I had, when I had um, did my podcast, I talked about real, real intricate, deep shit. Mm -hmm. And my last episode was 11, uh, episode 11. And it was called Awareness is Not for the Faint of Heart. And I titled it that because when you become aware of you, mm -hmm. the reality of change hits different. Mm. Mm. Hits totally different. 100%. Right? So now we could look at everything else and it's easy to say, you know what, let me put the, the piece of the puzzle right here to fix somebody else's life. But when you're looking at you putting that piece together to that puzzle, it hits different. It's totally mm -hmm. different. So like the first episode I did on my podcast was called The Foundation to Our Habits. And the reason why I titled it that because I wanted people to realize that when I was speaking, the introduction of that podcast, I was speaking about how we're born into this world through the gift of, of labor and how our, our parents and forefathers and everybody, they're giving us these gifts that they fill as life, right? 
they're teaching us all these traditional viewpoints and this condition and the way the world is, and they're putting us in this, this state of being. And eventually we become just like them mm. without ever having the gift to really think for ourselves because now we're thinking in a position that was given to us to think. The same emotional state my mother had and my father had, I have the same emotional state. Mm. So for me, my gift was to always, you know the name of the podcast was called Stop Being the Same. Mm -hmm. That was the name of my podcast, Stop Being the Same Podcast. And it was about teaching people how to have or tap into their unique gifts that they themselves have without the, the position of being taught that. Like, what are you really paying attention to in life that makes you aware of not only your behavior currently, but how you'll continue to carry yourself for the rest of your life if you don't look at yourself in the mirror, right? So, man, so many great titles. I mean, life is full of magicians. I mean, I, I have these intricate titles because um, the world people have become master liars. And it's hard for us to really dial into that because our conversations with each other, generally in good points, wants to start out with the truth, but we know if we say it, it changes the trajectory of how people are gonna view us, right? So if someone is giving me a position and I don't like what that person stands for, I can't say that. Right? So it silences the truth inside of a person for us to be able to uphold that organicness that we really have. And it's been dumbed down to people for so many years that eventually when you ask somebody, hey, how's your day? What's the first thing they say? I'm good. Right? It's fine. But psychologically, it's not. They know it's not. But they can't just be like, hey, man, I got a fucked up day. Mm. It just ain't happening. My circumstance and situation is like this. You know what I mean? I'm on the outs. Uh, I just lost my job. Shit, I'm four months behind on rent. You know, ain't nobody gonna spill the beans like that because they're so big on protecting the ego and the facade that their life has to appear to be better than yours. But I mean, in their defense, also people don't care. They don't mm -hmm. care. People, they don't. Somebody say, how you doing? They don't they, care. They, exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. it's like, That's true. I think especially as men, it's like, you know, I, I, I don't want to waste my time with yours. Yeah. Right? But there, there's something interesting I saw. Um, I think it was a YouTube video I was watching. Um, he was interviewing people and he was asking them, he said, um, what do you miss the most about yourself? Mm. Right? And one, one lady that he stopped, uh, she stood out to me. He asked her, what do you miss about yourself? She said, I, I miss my depression. Mm. Mm. Um, Interesting. I've, I've, I've been trying to like make sense of that. What, 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 are your, what, are your, what are your thoughts? As someone who's dealt in that arena, while it's not a great space to be in, it's calming. Because mm. depression can make you numb to where you have so many things and so much going on at one time, you don't qualify or quantify any of it. Mm. You sit in your oblivion and you think of nothing. It allows and you that to sounds turn like it's, you know, it, it, it seems like it's impossible, but you literally can lay and not and click and just be when you work on coming out of that depression, mm -hmm. you have to work through the trauma that got you there, which in turn pulls it all up. So now you got to feel, and it's feelings on overload when you're coming up out of it. Mm -hmm. So if, and again, if you're, if you're consistently living in a state of chaos, when you have one of those episodes, the noise is quieted. There's peace in it. However momentary, it's peaceful. So if she hasn't done what's, like, if she's in a world where she still doesn't have true peace. Chaos is her peace. Chaos mm -hmm. becomes her chaos peace. Chaos is her peace. Shit. And that's, that, that's the, the, the intricate parts of how deep the human mind can go. That, that mm. to me, is what I study. Mm. That is what I aim to break down because... When I look into the human being, uh, how we think and operate, I'm always looking at things like that, right? How does your chaos become your peace, right? Just think about that. 
for a second. Like, how does that become your peace? You are normalizing things that you know you shouldn't normalize, right? So when you look at somebody else who does have a state of peace, you look at them as they're fucked up. You know what I'm saying? Like, Not this like person is just completely fucked up because they do have a real sense of peace, and you don't. Your depression and your is, is, is so peaceful to you that you want to pull people in it with you. And if you, like, I've had to study it, too, because I took psych was my major before I realized I got to have a doctor before I could do anything with it. And I was mm. like, screw that. Yeah. <laughs> One of the things that always interested me because I was affected by anxiety and depression was how far it could go. Mm -hmm. And if you study people that have had anxiety or depression more heavily and they've committed suicide, mm -hmm. oftentimes before they commit suicide, it is the happiest you'll see them. They mm -hmm. will be smiling and having a good time in a family photo. This is a, we took this the day before he killed himself. Mm -hmm. This was two hours before. Little, a little 10-year-old took their life. And most people do remember those experiences with people that have committed suicide. That's, that's, that's the overwhelming view of it because it's nirvana. Hmm. However twisted and dark it is. So I liken it to us living, people in this world living in a state of nirvana with how, untruth. How, how, does this, how does this, in your opinion, manifest itself? If, if we were to take the position that a lot of women are walking around depressed or full of anxiety. A lot of men in our community are walking around depressed and full mm -hmm. of anxiety. How does that manifest itself in our relationships? Other than just chaos being our peace. The moments where you're good is the quiet part of that depression. The moments where you're at peace, that's what it makes you think, oh, this is comfortable. It's cool. It's good because... While you're depressed, you have somebody else there interjecting, and you, th you think that is a part of your peace because y'all are in a good state. But then when it goes awry, that's the manic, that's the chaos, that's the crazy. So it's more, a more of your normalcy. You just incorporate that person into, or I guess incorporate them, in, or replace them with the quiet. And I can, when I was diagnosed with depression, I was dating someone I knew I should not have been dating in a whole ass relationship with them living in. As soon as I started seeing a, a therapist and being intentional about breaking the cycle, I moved out <laughs> into my homegirl house and told them, you got to figure it out for you. When did you, when did you realize that you was depressed? When nothing, nothing could make me happy. I couldn't even pretend anymore. I worked at, I was working at Verizon at the call center, and y'all yeah, know what a call center is. Verizon is like the Harvard of call centers when I'm stressed. So it was a highly stressful job. Mm -hmm. I would go home, I would quiet, I would smoke weed to try to decompress, hang out with my homegirls, because this was when I was in my tw early 20s, so go out to the bar. I didn't even have the energy to go do that. And I am a social butterfly. As much as I am, I like to be by myself, I like to be out and social. I would go to work and then go home. So you said nothing made you happy? Nothing. Not even my mom. And I used to, like, I lived in Columbia. I would go home to visit my mom every two weeks or so. And mm. my mom's like my best friend. I didn't even want to go home because I didn't want her to ask me, how are you? Because when I'm on the phone, I can lie. Mm. But... When I'm in my mom's presence, like if I'm having a bad day, if I feel bad and I just see her, I turn into a little kid again where somebody pushed me down outside. And I don't know why that is, but I, she would be able to see it. My, no lie, my mom and my brother thought I was on drugs at one point because I had lost weight because I just wasn't being me. And when, also when they, they started noticing it too, because me, I'm just like, I'm still trying to talk myself out of it. No, it's just you're going through a rut, you're going through a phase, but nothing and nobody, and I didn't want to go see my mama like be in her presence physically, and that's not normal for me. When you ask the question, how is that showing up in our relationships, mm -hmm. that's what it looks like. It looks like two people not being happy with anything. Mm -hmm. So when they're in relationships, they'll never be happy with each other because they can never see or have gratitude for the efforts that each other are making to have a better relationship. So it's like, if I'm not happy with the way you did the dishes, 
or the way you folded the clothes, right? It's like these little intricate things that people find to fight over, right? And I noticed that, like, in my household, my lady, she folds us out to towels a certain way. I fold them, they fold it. My mind ain't even thinking about any of the intricacies of the way the towel's folded. But she'll come right behind me and fold that towel according to what she feel it should be folded like. Yeah, because it go in the closet a certain way. Yeah, so then she'll say, well, the way you fold the towels, I just don't like the way you fold the towels. Then I say, okay, well, you fold the towels from here on out. I won't fold the towels. Then my response to her is negative. You see how that goes? Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to move myself from a position to even being argumented with over a towel the way it's folded. You fold the towel the way you like. But I'm saying that those little intricate things like that, when you look at how people are depressed, it can show up in something as the way you folded the towel mm -hmm. and how you interfere with the process of living in the same space with someone that does something differently from you because they're so interested into things that have they have created these comfort zones in, right? And it disturbs them. Just think about that for a second. It disturbs them. If you do something differently than they're, they're, they have normalized, it's automatically going to disturb their state of peace or their depression, right? It's like that's how they're coping. So when you enter that space with them, it could be anybody. When you enter that space with them, or the first thing they're looking at is how well can you fit into my comfort zone? And it could be a state of depression. But if you're trying to bring a level of peace or have these intellectual elevated conversations, they want you away from their space. I notice that. I notice that when I go around people, I'm always trying to have the, the elevated state of conversation to move us outside of that state. But then it's like, you always want to have the deep conversation. I'm like, well, if we don't have the deep conversation, we don't move out to circumstance. Right, but then you find yourself saying, "Okay, well, I need to find my group of people." Right, mm -hmm. because even if your group of people you feel like naturally should be your household first, that don't necessarily mean it's going to be right. And sometimes you have to walk away from that. Mm -hmm. As hard as that is, sometimes in your mind you got to think why some of the greatest people the most intelligent people on the planet have decided to leave their immediate families because the connection was totally different, right? It, was, it wasn't serving them anymore because they were so endowed in the way the world was doing things or how they wanted to continue to occupy their space and time that the person over here was trying to alleviate the suffering in the house, but it never was received that way. It was more about control. One one of the things I I think it would be helpful for us to do, and and it's something I encourage men to do. Um, and I think that was the whole point of the Yellow Flag series. Mm. I think part of the resentment a lot of men have towards women is that we were told the lie that every woman is lovable, and every woman was deserving of love. Right. So when we or Mr. Nice Guy, we buy her flowers, we take her on dates, this, this, and that, and it doesn't work out. She leaves us for the dope boy, or she cheats on us, or whatever the case may be. It's a shattering of that um, reality. So, as a woman, I think you're, you're better suited to help men per perhaps understand this. What are some telltale signs that a man could see to distinguish between a woman who is lovable and, and lovable, not from a, I think everybody's deserving of love as human beings, right? Mm -hmm. But lovable as in like, she has the capacity to receive love. Cause just like you described mm -hmm. in a certain stage or in a certain state, you didn't even have the capacity to receive love, mm -hmm. which is why you sought chaos, right? Mm -hmm. So how can men start differentiating so they don't just build up that generalized resentment towards women in general because they were going after women who were incapable of receiving love? Mm -hmm. Interesting question. Looks are not always everything, first of all. If, and you, you can look somebody up on anything, if you see their social media and their focus is their looks, that's what your focus is. You see that, you know what they what they got going on. Mm -hmm. So once we talk about having substance, if you don't see any substance there, mm -hmm. if you're conversing with this person, 
are they generically, how was your day, how are you doing? <clears throat> or are they asking you about, oh, you had that big report today, how did it go? So are they, are they remembering what you're talking about? Are they interested in not just passing, passingly so, but truly interested? Mm -hmm. Are they doing things for themselves? And I, me and um, I think my girlfriend were talking about this the other day. I like to know what people's motivation is. Mm. What is your motive? What motivates you? And you don't even have to ask the question to figure it out. You can talk around it. What, you know, what do you do for work? Mm. What are your plans for your, for your job? Now, you can have some people that are going to tell you, well, I'm in this position now. I want to work my way up to here. If she tell well, I work here because, you know, they pay this right now, but I'm going to go somewhere else, you know what their motivation is. Mm -hmm. You get to pick and choose and decide. The more you talk to someone... You've got to pay attention. You, they, they will reveal who they are. And in doing so, you just have to understand, are you accepting them for who they are? Or are you putting on the mask? Mm -hmm. Putting on the suit? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Because in this day and age, I hate to, like I said, I saw some women out there were wrapped up in a pretty package. Mm. But as soon as they started talking, mm. I knew exactly what they were about. Mm. That, that that, that's, that's been my biggest thing, especially in, in you know, the social media space, YouTube and the whole nine. Like some of these things that happen to certain men, and I've said it multiple times, they bring it on themselves. It's your, it, like, it's mm -hmm. your fault. What, what made you think she was mm -hmm. wifey material? Mm -hmm. And it's like, I, I also hold a little bit of space because, like I said, we were all fed that fairy tale. I tell mm -hmm. people all the time, men are the real romantics, mm -hmm. right? Men are the real romantics because we believe women are sugar and spice and everything nice. And that's mm -hmm. why we're so devastated by the realization that it's not true. And mm -hmm. niggas convert from mm -hmm. Russell to future, mm -hmm. right? But I think to your point, we're so unwilling to divorce ourselves of she looked good. Mm -hmm. She's it, oftentimes it's not even like a look good. She worked for it's genetics. Right? Mm -hmm. It's it's not her sense of style. It's not her uh, uh, packaging. It's not her scent. It's just genetics. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess to rephrase the question, it's like if you if you're if you're telling this to a ten year old boy, because I think that's when start, mm -hmm. you start. She's starting to realize that, okay, shit ain't sweet. What should they start looking for? And I think that's what I was trying to accomplish with the Yellow Flag series. Mm -hmm. What are some, like, literal things I, she might be worth having a conversation with or, like, you need to just keep it pushing with her? Mm -hmm. Is she the one bullying the little... If it's a 10-year-old, is she bullying? Is she picking on other girls, other boys? Or is she the one that's volunteering to help? Mm, interesting. Is she the one that's the, you know, the best student in the class? Is she the one that's sleeping in it? Because even a 10-year-old can see motivation. They can understand nice. I have a 7-year-old niece. She thinks she has a husband mm. because Cooper's nice and he gives her stuff. Well, not mm. Cooper. Yeah. <laughs> He's caucasian. <But, laughs> <laughs> you better get off my niece. <laughs> but in, in that, same, that same token, like, mm. oh, I don't like... How does she say, I don't like that girl because she didn't share her stuff with me. Mm. So did she not share or did you not ask appropriately? Mm. Is she bossy or is she gentle with you? So her demeanor has a lot to do with it. Demeanor, because, and it's not when everyone's looking. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's you have to observe on your own when nobody's watching. Mm -hmm. Because when everyone's looking, when you're on stage, attention's on you. But when you're sitting five rows back, and I'm a couple rows back from you, are you really looking at the show going on? Or are you scrolling your phone? I'm like that in my relationship. I get judged for that a lot. For not paying attention? I pay attention. Oh, mm. well, no, I think, that to, I think to me, well, again, that's so-called, it's important to pay attention. Like, I pay but attention. But not to what everybody else pays attention to. And I let to. you know I'm paying attention. Like, your actions are everything to me. Like, what you get up and do, mm. what you put your time and attention to. Integrity. I'm I, watching. I, I, I want you, for episode eight, I want you to watch the Yellow Flag series. The whole series? How many? I, th I think it's nine, nine or ten parts. <laughs> oh, so you, I'm going to replace Love and Hip Hop with it? You're not going to like some of it. I'm going to tell you that right now. You're not going to like some of it. But I would <laughs> like your feedback because my mindset making it was like talking to the younger mm -hmm. men, right? Mm -hmm. So they don't have to 
go through that traumatic uh, experience of figuring out that women are people, right? Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, I talked about like her profession. I talked about uh, her um, her hair, her nails. I talked about mm -hmm. a lot of like things that you can observe date one, date two, even on social media. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, we'll, we'll stop this one there, but that's your assignment. I want you to watch it, mm. and then episode eight, we're going to talk about it, because you will homework. disagree with me on certain things. Homework. I guarantee it. Homework. But I think it'll be worth uh, the conversation. Uh, Jai, any last words, man? Nah, man, I just would say um, it's always a beautiful conversation with, with the crew. You know, we missed you. You know, we ain't we seen did. you in a minute. We you did. Know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, man, uh, I would say, yeah, study that... Uh, I'm gonna go back and watch some of the episodes, yeah, yeah. but I know I know you're probably digging deep in there. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? I'm, I'm, I think I'm thinking about no, doing one for me, like a yellow flash, because I think a lot of that stuff is it, it crosses over. It needs to, yeah. Like I said, That'd you won't like some of it, yeah. but I'm I'm excited for the conversation okay. we can have. You know, afterwards. I love that. Yeah. That'd be interesting for the my man. truth and your truth can both be true mm -hmm. at the same time. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. oh boy. Any last words? I'm be cussing at them out for the next episode, just so y'all know. Mm. That's all I got to say. <laughs> Appreciate y'all for watching. Episode 8 coming soon. Coming Peace. soon. Peace.